Hi everybody, Al Bernstein here with another one of my quick hits. And on this video, we're gonna talk about an upcoming fight that took everybody by surprise when it was announced. Gennady Golovkin taking on Kel Brook, defending his middleweight title against Brook. Well, this was a fight that no one expected to see. When it was announced, I think I can safely say that every single pundit, every single boxing expert, everybody in the sport was surprised. And why was that? Because we all thought that Gennady Golovkin and promoter, his promoter, Tom Loeffler, and Eddie uh, Hearn, the promoter of uh, Chris Eubank Jr., were negotiating for a fight for this man, Chris Eubank Jr., uh, stationed there next to his father, Sr., was going to be the opponent of Gennady Golovkin. But apparently the negotiations with Eubank Sr. was so difficult and they were so hard to do that even his own promoter, Eddie Hearn, had to give up the ghost. And at some point, had Kel Brook on the phone and said, well, it's a shame you're not a middleweight because <laughs> we could get you in against Golovkin. And Kel Brook apparently said, well, I'll be happy to take that fight. And so the welterweight champion said he would face Gennady Golovkin. And, and thus, this was born. Gennady Golovkin against Kel Brook on September 10th uh, in London. Uh, in what will be a mega fight, not only for that region, which has a mega fight about every three months, it seems, uh, but also for the entire world, because whenever Gennady Golovkin steps in the ring, it's of import. Uh, and in this case, the idea of one of the welterweight champions coming up and challenging him is an extraordinary thing. Uh, we'll get in a moment, we'll get to the uh, uh, to some of the issues that some have surrounding it. But let's talk for a moment about the two men. Gennady Golovkin, of course, um, has demonstrated that he is uh, the cream of the middleweight crop uh, until someone says otherwise or shows otherwise. Uh, he's in his mid-30s, racing against time to get big fights that will show people his true skill sets uh, and give him the kind of challenges uh, that he wanted. Of course, we know that earlier this year, there was the thought that he might fight uh, Canelo Alvarez, and in theory, negotiations were going on. That fight went south when Alvarez decided instead to go back down to 154 pounds uh, and uh, challenge Liam Smith, another Brit, uh, for uh, to uh, win that title. As for Kel Brook, he is a fascinating man, in my opinion, because he's clearly one of the best welterweights in the world. Some would say maybe the best with the IBF championship that he won from Sean Porter. He's been unable to secure what he would consider a major fight since then. Now, he is a very big welterweight, and that's part of the storyline here. He feels he can go up to 160 pounds and be effective. His move to move up to fight for the middleweight title is hardly unprecedented. I know in recent times, much has been made of the idea of fighters moving up and how uh, going up to 160 is too much for them. Floyd Mayweather was an, uh, an example of that when people were uh, looking for him to fight Gennady Golovkin. Uh, but I do want to remind everyone that uh, Years in years gone by, fighters like Emil Griffith, who went up and challenged for the middleweight title, uh, and Henry, many others who have done it, including Roberto Duran, who had moved up to, to welterweight and really not, uh, uh, not been a welterweight for that long when he decided to challenge Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And I did the Hagler Duran fight, and Duran went 15 tough rounds with Hagler, even in losing a decision. So it's not unprecedented, nor is it bizarre, really, for a welterweight to go up and challenge uh, the middleweight champion. Now, because now we're so used to the junior divisions, where in between welterweight and middleweight, now we have the 154-pound division, uh, that's where we expect fighters to, to move up incrementally. But 
we have seen this before. Is this a good fight for Kell Brook? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, it's a calculated risk to be sure. Uh, he believes he's up to the challenge. And there's no question he's a very skilled fighter. And as I said, physically, he will come into this fight not looking like a small fighter compared to Golovkin. I think and Golovkin is not a huge middleweight. He's someone who can even get down to 154 pounds. So I don't think there's going to be a huge physical difference. The big question, of course, is the punching power. Gennady Golovkin is, uh, is just a huge puncher to both the body and the head. And if Kell Brook is to win this fight, he's going to have to tactically fight as good a fight as he can fight. And I think he's going to have to get Golovkin's respect with his punching to keep the hard charging Golovkin from coming forward. My last comment on this uh, fight is uh, some people are really denigrating the whole idea of the fight. Not me. Uh, it's, there's not exactly a line of middleweights who seem anxious to fight Gennady Golovkin. There just isn't. Uh, and Chris Eubank Jr. had his opportunity, and somewhere in that whole business situation, it got muffed. Uh, and so here's a welterweight champion stepping up and saying, I'm going to face this big, hard-punching middleweight champion. This is not inappropriate. This has happened in the sport of boxing before. Now, could it be a gross mismatch? Possibly. Uh, certainly, Brooke is the underdog in this fight. But of all the people that could be taking on Gennady Golovkin, uh, Kell Brook is hardly at the bottom of the list. And this fight would not be happening if, as I said, uh, there was uh, a lot of middleweights and middleweight champions and others who were that anxious to take on Gennady Golovkin. So let's see what happens on September 10th. I'm not one of the naysayers about this fight. I think it's an interesting and big event. And I give Kell Brook all the credit in the world for stepping up to this challenge. We'll see what happens.